Because you're all sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters. We come now once again on this fine snowy day here in Oklahoma. Our first snow of the winter season is upon us. And uh, uh, I've heard it's been snow in other places already, which is, uh, uh, well, you know what they say, they're using us. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're coming here this morning. Uh, our reading from the Hebrew Bible is going to be from uh, Proverbs. And... Uh, you know, before I start this reading, I'm reminded of that uh, the movie Highlander. I don't know if y'all watch that sort of thing or not, but there's a song sung there, and uh, I, I'm thinking it's by the Eagles. I'm not, huh? No. Well, the song is, it asks the question, who wants to live forever? And so, uh, have y'all thought about that? What would it take? And here we go. Here we're going to talk about this. Um, so let's go to Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. It's Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding. For her income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. To those who lay hold of her, those who hold her fast are called happy. And our uh, reading from the New Testament is going to come from the book of Revelation, the actual end of Revelation. We're going to chapter uh, 22, Revelations 22, 1 through 7. And... Uh, Let's have a look here. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and God's servants will worship Him. Will worship God. They will see God's face, and God's name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun. For God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And the angel Eve said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. For God, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show God's servant what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this word. The tree of life. The tree of life is spoken of in Revelation and in Proverbs both. The tree of life is the tree that exists in many myths and legends from around the world and uh, can be found in early Judaic teachings going back to uh, Genesis and we'll get into that more a little bit later but more specifically the fact that it exists in indigenous cultures around the world 
stands out as a significant commonality among all human beings around the globe. That God has shared this understanding of the sacred tree, the tree that brings life to the people, immortal life to the people. He shared among all peoples. Here in North America, there are many legends, many myths about the tree of life. The Seneca, you know, the sacred tree of the Seneca, the tree of peace, the peace tree. And the tree of life is, is considered a place of refuge, a place of nurturance, a place of where all the people come together in harmony, living together as one, in one spirit, despite their differences. And so the old ones tell us that the tree of life existed in Gadolante, at least in the Cherokee tradition, and that the radiance that came from it lit the world. Now, Gadolante in Cherokee means uh, heaven, the one who comes from heaven. And so it tells us that, you know, we call that the upper world. In our Indian religious tradition, there's three worlds. Lower world, middle world, upper world. We're in the middle world right now. We're living in this physical reality on this earth. That's the middle world. Lower world is the place of the animals. Inside the core, the spirit of the animals live. The upper world is where the spirit of the enlightened beings live. Uh, the ones who are immortal. And so, uh, we are taught in the, by the old ones that and uh, that the tree of life is centered to the realm of God. That the fruit of the tree of life brings the immortality. And the fruit of the tree of life is wisdom. Wisdom and understanding. It is through wisdom and understanding that we become one with our Creator's will and our Creator's way that we are joined in the spirit of our Creator. And in so doing, we have access to the spring of life, to the water of life, that comes forth from the tree of life. In Revelation you see where it says the tree of life was on each side of the river. Well, when you think about that, you know, you can think about that in two ways. Was it two trees, one on each bank? Or was it one giant tree from which the spring of life came forth? And in our Indian religious tradition, we, we think of one giant tree from which the spring of life comes forth. And that, that spring of life is the spring of spirit. It's the flow of spirit, the power of our Creator, living in us, through us, and all around us. But we make that choice as to whether or not we want to internalize being a part of that spring of life. Because we can shut ourselves off from the spring. We have that choice. Or we can welcome that waters to flow through us. In the IC ceremony, before we begin our purification process, the sweat lodge, we bring the water in and we bless it. It is the water of life. It is the water of cleansing. And so we bless it as the water of life and offer it up in that way and pass it around. You know, we do our ceremony that way. We have about too much information about that. But that's, you know, the importance of the water. The water brings purity, brings cleansing, brings wisdom, brings understanding, brings life. And it comes from that sacred truth. And so to embrace the Spirit means to embrace wisdom, to embrace knowledge. And then the Buddha, the Buddha is said to have sat next to the Bodhi tree, the sacred tree, and there he gained enlightenment. Now, out there in New Mexico, or, you know, out there in the Southwest, 
and in California, there are trees that live for a long, long time. And they see the coming and the going of human beings. And they remember everything. And anybody who has done any research into whether or not uh, plants and trees have uh, feelings, have memory, uh, should do research on the Benthorn Project. I think I've spoken of this some time back. But, uh, you know, I know here in North America that plants and, and trees have been used to help solve crimes, especially uh, murders, you know, or this serious pain and suffering, this dissonance has been radiated out. The plants remember the people who inflict these, these great harms on others, and so they can be used to help identify uh, perpetrators of these serious crimes. And so, uh, but uh, these trees, they have memory. And my feelings about it is the Buddha sat there with that tree and let go and talked to the tree and the spirit spoke to the tree and shared the wisdom and the understanding with the Buddha. And he became enlightened. He surrendered all negativity with the help of the tree of life. And in so doing, received enlightenment, achieved enlightenment through surrendering the negativity. And so, the tree of life is significant to the people in all walks. And even here, we go back to the origins of the tree of life in Genesis. You can go to Genesis uh, chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, I think is the abbreviated approach to it. Genesis chapter 3, verse uh, 22 through 24. Then God said, See, the man has come like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore God sent him forth from the garden of Eden till the ground, to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed a cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Now, this story basically is a multiple shared origin story of uh, the creation of human beings uh, from the Mesopotamia region, you know, the Middle Eastern region. And so uh, it's shared among many cultures in different ways, but basically what it's reflecting is, is that in the Garden of Eden there were two trees, two sacred trees. One was the, the tree of the fruit of good and evil, and the other one was the tree of life. Well, in this story, the man, they don't call him by name, they call him by the man, didn't go to the tree of life and eat that fruit. They, they went to the other tree. So we know ourselves inherently, as I spoke about last week, uh, the nature of good and evil. It is a part of our being. We know the difference between doing good and doing bad. And sometimes we justify uh, doing good, what we, what we think is doing good, but in truth we're not necessarily doing it, but we're just justifying it to feel good about ourselves. But in this sense, God is saying, okay, if you're going to be like that, I'm going to limit your access to the tree of life so that you can live forever. And the way that we have to achieve, the work that we have to do to achieve being a part of the tree of life, being one of the branches of that tree, embracing and receiving the water of life is through embracing God's will, surrendering God's will to our will, and seeking to be of good service according to God's terms and not our own. Which means we have to figure out what it is that God values most and honor those values over and above our own selfish desires. We must embrace wisdom 
and understanding because according to the Hebrew Bible, the tree of life, you look at Proverbs, it tells you that the tree of life is wisdom. Now, of course, you keep in mind that this particular section of Proverbs was amorphizing wisdom as a, as a woman, a beautiful woman. And that was pretty common in the, in the time period that this was written and in the area it was written. And so, but it's telling you that if you gain wisdom, you're going to gain happiness. You're going to gain peace. So the question is, what is it in this world that you want? And what is it in the next world that you want? Do you want the material things? Do you want the wealth, the jewels, the gold? Or do you want to have good relationships with, with human beings? Do you want to have a good relationship with God and with yourself? In order to have those good relationships, you're going to have to strive to move forward to gain the wisdom and understanding, and that comes through meditation and prayer and suffering for the people and being of service to the people. Like the Buddha, you know, I too have sat next to the tree to pray to gain that understanding of things. Have you sat next to a tree, meditating next to a tree? There are many trees that we know in our Indian religious tradition which can help rejuvenate us, rejuvenate our spirit. Pine trees, for example, have great radiant spirit. The pinyon pines, the northern pines, I love sitting at the base of a pine tree for a day and just feeling the energy radiating from them. In the springtime, it completely refreshes and rebalances and restores the harmony to your spirit. And that's what Jesus did. That's what Buddha did. You know, they go out in the wilderness and sit with a tree, to gain that rejuvenation. Christ went off many times on his own to gain that rejuvenation. It is a part of what we must do. And so when it comes to spring, because we're in the winter right now, I don't really strongly encourage you to go out there and jump under a tree, although there are probably parts of the world where you can do that. But uh, you think about it, you sit at the tree and you, and you think about, well, this tree is sacred. This tree is one in spirit. I could gain wisdom and understanding by learning the ways of this tree. And when you seek these paths, you gain a better understanding of what the writers, what the writers of Revelation, what the writer of Proverbs, what the writers of Genesis are talking about in this book. But ultimately, it is through the grace of God that we receive our nurturing and our peace, that we receive wisdom and understanding. One must have a willingness to receive God's grace and God's blessing in order to be able to move forward with gaining wisdom and understanding. And I'm reminded of, uh, oh, there's a movie. Uh, folks don't talk about it much anymore when they found out, or they found out who the real author of the book was. But, hmm, now I'm not recalling the name of it. All right, have to come back to that. But there are many good American Indian uh, movies out there, and I'll have to look into those. Uh, but it's a, it's a story of a young boy who, uh, who goes through a great struggle of finding his way, and the people, you know the. Society, mainline society, keeps trying to take him away from who he is and make him like them. And he fights against it. 
Oh, now I've got it. This movie's called The Education of Little Tree. And Little Tree is a little boy. And the book uh, was not written by an Indian, as far as I know, but uh, it, still, it still has good, good teaching in it. And so the little boy, they keep, they keep trying to put him into the boarding schools and force him to be like, uh, like mainline uh, Christians. And he fights against it. And the reason he fights against it is his family, his grandfather and his grandmother, who teach him that he must seek to gain understanding if he is to find his true path, if he is to find peace. And so this book is about this little boy seeking to find the understanding. And there are many things that a human being must do to achieve it. But those, those of us who practice in your religious traditions, we, we know these things. It's through wisdom and understanding that we are able to take right action. Right action is the action that guides us to do right by our Creator, our community and all of creation. And so you ask yourself, do you enjoy your life? Is it working for you? Is what you're doing helping you to grow and evolve in a good way in your relationship with Creator, with yourself, with your family, the community? Or are you yearning for something more? Something maybe a little better? Are you looking forward to the immortal life in spirit? And if so, then I encourage you to heed these words and to seek wisdom. For wisdom, like the tree of life, seeks to nurture us and strengthen us and protect us from acting out self-sabotaging behavior. The acceptance of God's grace and forgiveness is the beginning of eating the fruit of the tree of life and of receiving the waters of life that will bring that immortality that we see. Walking beauty. Walking beauty.